Epigenetics is to biology what quantum physics is to physics. It has turned our age-old understanding of biology upside down. Or, as I've put it many times already, the opposite of what we have always believed is true. From epigenetics, we now know our perception of the environment controls our DNA, not the other way around. We're going to watch three video clips from Dr. Lipton. In this first video, he's also going to give you a short perception test. So watch carefully. So uh, there are three conclusions uh, because I, I, can, I don't have enough time to talk about one, but I will list them. Okay, conclusion one, perception, how you see life, the switch, controls behavior because that's protein. Perception controls which genes are being read and how they're being read. And the one I didn't have time for right now is the third one, perception can rewrite the genetic code. So perception controls life. No two people see the world in the same way. They have different perceptions. But let's do a perception test. Okay. Uh, the, this is the, the question, the first one is a simple question, because it's important because perception controls your biology. So the first, like the perception test is a simple one. Is the surface area of A greater than, equal to, or less than the surface area of B? Which is greater? B, yeah. This is, a, this is a, they're equal size squares. Not equal, but they're uniform. So I, I want to make a more, more difficult test. I will show you two surface areas that are not regular. You must, with your mind, see which is bigger. Okay, so it okay, depends so. if you're in the front row or the back row or you have glasses or if you're well or not well what you see. So it's a, a question I'll use a, a map. Which has more surface area, Europe we'll or South you. America? Calculate in your head uh, the surface. The answer is the South America. Is. <laughs> South America is two times larger than Europe. Twice as large. You could see that, right? Ah, ah, the map <laughs> is wrong. This is the Mercator map. It That's was made by Germans. Where did they put Germany? Deutschland is in the dead center. Isn't the equator the dead center? This map is wrong. Do you want to see the correct map? It's called the Peters projection map. Which is larger, South America or Europe? The point is that you learn perceptions. And sometimes uh, your perceptions can be right and sometimes your perceptions can be wrong. Since perception controls biology, and since they can be right or wrong, then it's more accurate to say that Belief controls biology. What you believe creates your life on the inside and on the outside. If there was one thought I would pick out of that video to remember, it's this. Perception controls life. Sometimes your perceptions can be right and sometimes your perceptions can be wrong. And since perceptions can be wrong, it is more accurate to say that beliefs control biology. What you believe creates your life, on the inside and on the outside. Dr. Lipton is going to use an example called the placebo effect. Placebo is normally used as a medical term, meaning a patient is given something neutral, like a sugar pill, and yet it makes them feel better. There is no chemical reason in the placebo for it to have any effect at all on the body, but it does somehow. That somehow is because the patient believes it will and nothing else. It is the patient's belief that changes their biology and their behavior. But this placebo effect does not have to be limited to medicine or pills. In fact, it is an operation a lot of the time as we, the players, believe something, anything, is good for us, 
that is actually neutral, and yet it makes us feel good or better. This, of course, is true for all homeopathic remedies as well. Homeopathy is still based on a belief that taking something from out there, natural though it might be, will have an effect in here. The other side of the coin, and not nearly as well known, is the nocebo effect. This is when a patient, or a player, believes something, anything, that is actually neutral is harmful to them, and it makes them feel bad or worse, when in fact there's nothing in the nocebo that can hurt them at all. Take a look. Now, we have heard of something called the placebo effect, right? The placebo effect is when you have a very positive thought that something can heal you, even if it's, we, you don't know it, but it's a sugar pill, uh, but you believe it's the real medicine, then you can heal yourself with that. So the pill didn't heal you, it was the thought that healed you. Statistics reveal that one third of all medical healings, including surgery, are the result of the placebo effect. Now, the issue is that the placebo effect is when you have positive thinking. There was a question this morning, what about negative thinking? And this is what medicine does not tell you, is that there is negative thinking and it's called the nocebo effect. And in the same power that positive thinking can heal you, negative thinking can kill you. They're both the same effect. One is more positive, one is more negative, but the effects are exactly the same in your health. One will heal you and the other can make you sick. If a doctor tells you you have a disease or the doctor tells you you're going to die and you believe the doctor because he's the professional, the belief will give you a disease and can cause you to die. So belief becomes an important part of medicine. Now, many of you have heard about the drug Prozac. Every year, billions of dollars are spent on buying Prozac. And here's a surprise, that the Prozac is no better than a sugar pill, so that it is a placebo drug. And yet the people who take it believe in the drug so much, okay. it makes them better. So if you believe that something is good for you, it will be good. And if you believe that it's harmful for you, it will be bad. In the United States in the South, there's a religious group called the Baptist Fundamentalists. And this one group works themselves up into a state of ecstasy, religious ecstasy. And they believe God protects them. And so they will work with snakes, poisonous snakes, like rattlesnakes. To, and they will even get bitten by the snake, and nothing happens to them. Now look at this, though. Okay. Some of them, some of them will drink strychnine in toxic doses, and when they're in that state of belief, it does not affect them. So if you can drink toxic poison, then then why, why do we worry so much about the toxins or the food and the, and, and the air and all that? Because we have a belief that the toxins can kill us. And even on the, on the cigarettes, What's on it? the package, it tells you this will kill you. But even though I know this, I will not drink strychnine. And why? Because my belief is not as strong as their belief. Belief is important about everything, in, including uh, our health and our aging and the world that we live in. This is a picture of some beautiful women that dance in what is called the Palm Springs Follies. And I ask, what do you think is unusual about these women? Uh, they, they, actually, they have arms, but they're in red gloves against the red, so it's hard to see. What is unusual? Their ages. 75 years old. Aging is not in their belief because they have a passion to dance 
and the passion keeps them young and alive and healthy. But most of us see other people grow old and expect that we must grow old like they do. In both cases, the placebo and the nocebo, it is the player's belief and not the actual experience that controls their perceptions and determines their behavior. Dr. Lipton said, If you believe that something will be good for you, it will be good. And if you believe that something is harmful, it will be bad. He also said, If you can drink toxic poison, then why do we worry so much about the toxins in the food and the air and all that? Because we have a belief that the toxins can kill us. Belief is important about everything, including our health, aging, and the world we live in. In the next video, Michael Talbot, author of The Holographic Universe, also discusses the placebo effect, and at the end, the nocebo effect as well, tying it directly to Carl Prebrum and quantum physics. Prebrum, as I said, says that we're thinking with holograms inside our head, and that out there exists something that's more akin to the radio waves in the room from which your TV gets the image. So in essence, we're kind of conscious TV sets. And what we think is reality when we look out here is really just the image on the TV set inside our mind, but doesn't exist out there. And Pribram says this is why there's all kinds of evidence that we seem to respond, respond more to the models of reality in our head than out there. Uh, in, in the holographic universe, I give an example of a psychologist who did a study where he took soldiers and marched them all the same distance, but he told some they marched, uh, like he marched them all 30 mi or 20 miles, but told some they marched 10, some they marched 20, some they marched 30. Uh, but they all marched the same distance. At the end, he took physiological readings and discovered that they were, that they're physiologically, they responded not to the actual mileage that they had marched, but to what they had been told, the model of reality that they mm -hmm. assumed they had, the, the reality in their heads. Mm -hmm. And in medicine, people have used this, this application of the holographic idea that we respond to the model of reality, to say this may be why we respond more to, um, to, to the placebos, to fake drugs, there's a, a very famous example of a fellow who had uh, lymphatic cancer, tumors the size of oranges all throughout his body. His doctor basically thought he had about three days left to live. The fellow heard about a new drug called Crebiosin and said, you've got to give this to me. And the doctor said, well, frankly, you know, I don't think you have long to live and this drug takes several weeks to take effect. The man implored him and the doctor gave in sort of as an act of pity. He gave the man Crebiosin and three days later, the man's tumors melted, as the doctor put it, like snowballs in a hot stove, completely gone out of his body, faster than the strongest radiation treatment could have melted them away. The man is up around, walking around his hospital room, resumes his normal life, seems to be completely cancer-free. Several months down the line, he reads an article saying Crebiosin isn't that effective. Boom, 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 all his tumors come back. He's back in the hospital. The doctor starts to realize that maybe it wasn't the drug that cured the man, but the man's belief. So he lies to the man and he says, those articles are wrong. Crebiosin is effective and in fact, I've got an even more potent version of it. He injects just salt water into the man's veins. Again, the man's tumors melt away. He resumes his normal life. Unfortunately, many months down the line, he reads final studies on Crebiosin saying it's completely ineffective. Boom, 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 his tumors come back and he dies. Mm -hmm. But the, the bottom line is somehow this man had the ability mm -hmm. to access some deep level of healing himself. It wasn't the drug because salt water worked just as well as this alleged drug. And so again, here's an instance where he responded to the model of reality in his head, this deep belief that this drug would heal him, even though he wasn't even receiving the drug at a certain point in his treatment. And his body responded in kind. And that to me is the most exciting aspect of the holographic idea. And there are countless examples of it. There's a study of a new chemotherapy in England uh, where they took a group of cancer patients, half the patients they gave the drug, half the patients they gave a placebo, a fake. No one knew who was receiving the real drug or not. They told all the patients, this is a very toxic drug, may cause you to lose your hair. 30% of the people receiving just the fake lost their hair. And when I first heard this, I, I immediately thought, oh my gosh, about every donut that I'd ever eaten in my life and thought, oh, this is really bad for mm -hmm. me, that I'm, I may be responding to the model of reality more than, than you know, the, the nutritional aspects of the donut. There was a book and a popular British TV diet show in the last